Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Where's Sork? What are we doing? What's going on? Where, where, where am I? Who are you? I know where we are. We are. Where, where are we? We are the Wrestling Mayhem Show. It is episode five, thing something, uh, and it is not Sorg. Is coming at you live. It is my turn to host the show. It is my turn to run the things. It's my turn to run the place and probably run it and probably lose all of our Patreons in the process. Sorry, Sword. I know you're not here. Uh, but since I'm on the East Coast, I'm representing the East Side of and representing the central states of uh, the United States of America. It is the one, the only. The voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling. I don't know how to say your name. I I am disappointed, Riz. I've been gone for how long on this show? And then and, and, and mispronounce my name. You know what? That's fine. Hi I, guys. I mean, I, I know I know Sorg would have probably got it right. Oh well, so, yeah. Yeah, and, but and, yeah. So no, I'm back. In Asuka. Yeah, in Asuka. Uh, I'm back. Hi. How's it going, guys? I'm excited to be talking about wrestling because I haven't talked about wrestling with you guys for a long time. And I am... I, I know. I'm, I feel deprived. I feel uh, uh, jonesing for that fix, so to speak. I, I, I need it. I need that fix uh, to talk about professional wrestling and complain about it sometimes. Or, or not. We'll see what happens. Okay. That was barely a sentence. Uh, that was that was that was a thing, and uh, also joining us on the west coast of the U.S. in Cali, by the way, it is the one, the only, the Alex Cars. Power to the smart, sir. What up? Canceling my Patreon as we speak, and this is all your fault. You are not. <laughs> you, I, I will force you to stay on. I mean, this is okay. true. This is this right. is just true. You I win. It. Anyways, guys, uh, normally you can see us on live.sorgatronmedia.com every Tuesday night, uh, around about ten o'clock, right after uh, SmackDown and SmackDown Live or whatever the hell it's called this week, and probably or during live. during two o five live. God, there's too much wrestling. There's too much wrestling. I mean, there's two o five live. There's NXT. There's uh, TNA. There's uh, <laughs> Brawl, SmackDown, there was, there was a there. ROH, Lucha. There's so much wrestling, and we like, are your cornucopia of wrestling knowledge right here. Like there's there's TNA? No. No, there's not. No. What they doing? How are they, how they doing? Uh, I mean, Matt Hardy's a thing still. Yeah, yeah, uh, but apparently. Everything you need to know, we have it covered around the United States of America and also around the world. I know you're probably listening to this in Thailand right now. So, uh, let's see. Where else am I going to go with this? Uh, I said live. That's where we're trying media.com. Follow us all on Twitter at, uh, at Mayhem Show. You were about to plug your own Twitter. I was. <laughs> Because it's weird. Because I'm I'm plugging I'm doing this on my yeah never mind uh, it's a different story for a different day but on the Facebook live group uh, Facebook dot com slash wrestling mayhem show yes yes slash wrestling mayhem show join our group it's so much fun sometimes uh, and it's a blast no it really is we have a great we have a great group of actual like wrestling fans from across the world. Uh, we have here, we have people from New York, uh, people from Texas, 
even further in California. Uh, we have people in from Japan, England, everywhere you want to know. We have it at Wrestling Mayhem Show on the Facebooks. And you can also drop the line to our email address. Everybody, please, one more time. Good time. You hear it? Good time. Good time. <laughs> I didn't know anything. Good times Good time. at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. And also drop us a line at that phone number. Uh, what's the phone 412-206-WMS0, uh, which I, is for, also 412-206-9670. Uh, yeah, drop us a line there. Leave us a voicemail. We may play on the show. Then, if, if anyone left a voicemail this time around. We probably won't be playing it. We don't. We don't have that technology right now. We don't. We don't. We don't. We're not from the future. We don't know what you're doing. Um, so our Patreon, uh, uh, Patreon slash Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, join us, like Alex Carr is over here. Hey, Alex. This is this is one of your perks. You get to join with us if you. If Sorg doesn't allow us to, you are on our show now. We have yes. we have taken over Sorg's show so, to have you we're on. We're taken over. Till next week when we're we're all fired. Um. So and and also, I don't have the list with me right now. But thank you guys so much for donating for oh uh right now. But I know Bo Diggity did it. Woo. Who? I know uh, the Matthew and Jennifer Carlin's foundation. Matthew and Jennifer Carlin. Yeah, that one. Uh, is Tonio still on the thing? Sure. I think he's still on the thing. I think he's th- still there. Tonio Garza uh, from Wrestling Possibly. Revolution. Possibly Ed Burke. Ed Burke? Yes, Edward Burke. Uh, Bishop, I believe. Thank you guys for your. Uh, what was that? What was the other one? Christopher Bishop, I believe, was the newer one. Christopher Bishop. Thank Welcome you, sir. The, this is what this is why we have you on here. This is one of your perks. You get a chance to be on the show with us, and you get to control what we do and what we say and what we need to do. And that's what we do. We are all fans of wrestling, correct? Correct. Yes. Yes. So we get to talk about wrestling every week. That is freaking awesome. So. I think I covered everything. I'm forgetting one thing. And you, you, Alex Cars, you, sir, would have hated me if I didn't do this. Me? Me? You. Go to ProWrestlingTees.com and buy one of our shirts. It is done by the Alex Cars. And. Amazing what he does. Yes. Done. Buy, buy the shirts. Buy the merch. Boom. Buy the shirts and also go to. Uh, you have is it whatamaneuver.com? Whatamaneuver.net, yep. Whatamaneuver.net. They have you have also the Legends of the uh, Lucha Temple. Temple. Yep. Of the Lucha Temple shirts, which are awesome. As, as featured available in seven colors. Uh, I think it's like from starting at twenty two ninety nine. And it's as featured on nice. various episodes of season three of Lucha Underground. Uh, go find nice. episode three. Go find me in the front row, right next to Sorg, watching the trio <laughs> title. It's great. I'm like, yes, there I <laughs> am, and there's the shirt. It's- <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, you ready for some wrestling? Uh, yeah. Define wrestling. Define wrestling. And define. Uh, well, well, first we're going to talk. About define art. What is life? Uh, art what is, is art is subjective. Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. No What's more. Happened? Anyways, we're me? probably going to get fined for that one. I don't know. This is what happens when Sorg lets me play with things. Oh, God. We, we have the show late. We have the show late. <laughs> and we sing, we sing really bad songs. That's what we do. Uh, but that, That'll get you a gimmick on SmackDown real quick. I know. I know. Anyways, uh, let's talk about the big news of the day, of the, of the week, actually. Uh, who is really picking up already. Eamon, you're going to this, right? Possibly. If I can get tickets. 
you are gonna be dude, famous. dude, that dude. I I don't even know what name. I I because you know you're so you're such a mark for the Goldberg and Brock Lesnar storyline. Right I haven't gotten to talk about it at all. No, well, and, and that's what. And honestly, that's why we have you on here now. I want you. I want you to delve into your thoughts. The Royal Rumble already having their two participants in it, Goldberg and Brock Lesnar. I mean, that's cool. Yeah, and and I will say I like Paul Heyman's promo on Raw this past week, but yeah, since I didn't get to talk about it during Survivor Series, um, what <laughs> is happening? Yeah. What's, no, gonna, yeah. It, like, am I the? I'm not the only one that's still like, really? What are we doing here? Again, have you? I, I, I've said this probably like last time on the show when I was on the show. Have we forgotten what brought, what a Goldberg match looks like? Yeah, and and but that was just, it. That was that was it. He wasn't going to put on a five star match with Brock Lesnar of all people. He no, he's going to do his moves and get paid and get out. But then again, it's also like a case of like, are you not looking at the full picture of things? Like, I, and I, I like how they spun it on Raw, obviously, but you had Brock get beat in ninety seconds. And I think I think there's a better, a, a bigger question to be asked there. Uh, is there a place for a Goldberg match in 2016? Is there oh. really? I honestly no. Was there? No. I I, I think he's he. I'll, I'll say he comes off as a nice enough guy. Like like I I I don't hate him. I don't despise him. But I just don't understand why he's there. Other than to promote a video. I don't know why. Other than to promote a video game. Yeah. Yeah. The, that's why he's there. It's not. It's not to win matches. It's not to get make WWE money. It's to promote a video game that's highly okay of video games that are now. They're they're trying to get so much into on my on the Ritz Plays Game Show on the Ritz Plays Game feed here because we're talking about video games now. It is it is all marketing towards the video game. Yeah. And I don't think a big match for a t- for Survivor Series, no less, let alone a WrestleMania, possibly, should be in should be you know a video game shouldn't be a reason to do that. No, it's not, and, Again, and it, it feels like they're trying to retcon it now. Like once now the match is over, they're going, okay, that that wasn't that good. Like they right. they, they know they made a mistake. They were, they were backing off a little bit, and they actually made Paul Heyman be the Paul Heyman we know. Right. And, and it, like uh, I said it when, it when it was on what happened. I was like, if that promo happened on for SummerSlam or for Survivor Series, whatever the hell it was called, mm-hmm. on top of this, I would have loved this match from the beginning because it told a damn good story and it, it told a it it, it it did what paul Heyman does it would just tell it would just make you like something that you're not supposed to like paul Heyman is making you like carrots by putting them in mashed potatoes oh i for that's a horrible analogy for me one i like carrots two carrots and mashed potatoes isn't now um, oh, oh how about 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 like corn and mashed potatoes see that's delicious too that is um, delicious. But I, I really like the Paul Heyman promo on Raw, but I like it because of what it could lead to a gold, uh, another match with Goldberg and Lesnar. Like, here's my issue is I, I, I do have almost a bit of an issue with the fact they're in the Rumble match now that I think about it. Because unless you're going to have one of them win. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I hope it's not true. What? Uh, that somebody win. That one of those two win. Then it's like. But, a, it's, it, but, but you're also assumingly you're also assumingly building to a match at Mania. Mm. If you're not going to do it at the Rumble, that's just my assumption. They're going to do another Goldberg Lesnar match, and the logical place is they're they're going to do it at Mania. But like, mm-hmm. so are you going to make it for the title? If so, that's a real waste. Yeah, that, that is a real waste. Now I think about it. Like. It's just the point where we're like, 
are we done with Go- are we done with Brock Lesnar now? See, I don't think we are, and that's the issue. Yeah. I, I think. I, I mean, think... are we as fans done with Brock Lesnar? Oh, in like, that I, case... we know WWE isn't done. Brock Lesnar. Yeah, I'd say. But I've been done for the. Maybe but are the fans? Fine? Yeah, I mean, well, that's one fan. You're one fan, but like, there's other people here who actually like the style for that Brock Lesnar brings the uh, the bit of realism, the bit of you know energy that he brings to a. Well, no, it's nothing. It might, well, a match it, makes it more of a street fight. In fairness, no, in fairness my issue is nothing with his style. It's with how he's been kind of portrayed and, and what and their direction with him, so to speak. That's been my issue with Lesnar. I don't I don't hate his style. But um, I, I think we'll have to wait and see on that. We'll have to wait and see until another Lesnar okay. match and stuff like that and see if this loss really affected him in that way. I have a feeling it has a lot of potential, too. Mm-hmm. Do we see him at Roadblock? No. No? No. Those are built to the Rumble. Yeah. Uh, Alex, you have any thoughts on this? I mean, the, I don't know. The... The idea of them kind of promoting this fight at Friday series in the first place because of the video game doesn't seem too terribly bad. I mean, we've had worse things happen. We've had Batista winning the Royal Rumble to promote a movie. Um, uh, yeah. But I mean, <clears throat> as far as this, the, like as far as the feud itself goes, I think it's going to be interesting to see where they go with it. But I do feel like it's. I don't know. I feel like this Survivor Series match is just like kind of. I don't know. It's just been too much. But at the same time, I just. I don't know. I guess we'll we'll just see what happens. I think it's ultimately what I would say about it. Uh, I do like the fact that Goldberg did come back, though. Like, I think, if nothing else, I like the fact that, you know, after what, 12 years, I guess we're saying, that Goldberg finally comes back. Yeah, and it's nice to actually see what could be a proper just WWE run with Goldberg. So. I think it's also, I mean, as far as like the possible Mania match goes, like I think it's also frustrating from a fact of this has been the year of allegedly the new era. Like they've mm-hmm. they've heavily promoted this whole new era thing of like we're making new stars now, and there's new people that are going to be in these positions, and yet they're kind of still defaulting to the same old like. You guys, you guys are here too, but when it comes to like the big matches, like on the big shows, like we still have, you know. And I think that's big show. You know, uh, where, where, where has he been? I mean, has he not been seen since the draft? Side note: I, I, think, I literally, I think, he was, I think he has been in like maybe two or three matches, and maybe not on TV though. Another right? promo. I could swear. I could have sworn. Maybe. Yeah. I think he was on TV once. Maybe. Like after that, but I think he did more promo stuff. Now I think they they, they were building to something. But hear me out. I, I do agree with what you said, Aven. Let's say, uh, and this is kind of fantasy booking it, and I don't like fantasy booking, but this is more of a what if. Mm-hmm. What if they're in the like they're both in the rumble beating each other up, and then. Let's say Braun comes in and eliminates them both. Mm-hmm. Big of a star, or how big of how big is Braun, Braun Strowman right now? I would like that. Uh, didn't Braun eliminate Lesnar? I, I, I may be wrong, but didn't Braun eliminate Lesnar last year? Yep. I I, I thought I, it was the other way around, but. Lesnar maybe Stro- maybe I, I don't but I see somebody somebody big eliminating them both and making them main event stars that night so I see I see I see a younger like the new era star doing that Brock or Goldberg winning I just see them being stepping stones for that next guy because both of those guys that are in that ring Goldberg and Brock Lesnar they don't care who wins. All they care about is making money, making a quick dollar, and that's what they're going to do in that ring. Right. Hey, I, I, and like I said, we'll have to see. We'll just have to see as, as things go. 
So uh, let's see what what usually goes here first. Was it? Let's talk, oh, you know Riz, what? Riz, let's talk about pizza. Oh, I, lo- I love pizza. You know where you, where you can get a lot of good pizza? Where's that, Riz? Right here in Pittsburgh, right on That's the so slice on either. Broadway. Air. For for you guys, it is, but for me, it's just the drive down to uh, to to Broadway or to PNC Park or the other one is to Carnegie. That's it, Carnegie. Uh, place on Broadway. They are really good pizza. Uh, I'm Sword keeps on talking about this Gonzo pizza that I need to try. I, I don't know what it looks like. It's probably the face of Gonzo from the Muppets. Uh, but their pepperoni pizza is pretty good for podcasting betterment. Uh, so go down there to your local on Broadway and tell them the, rest of the Wrestling Mayhem show sent you. Yeah. Yeah. So what now we're going uh yesterday's perfor- performance uh, of uh that will be uh competing with the mayhem show uh when it comes back uh to Tuesday nights. Uh it it was 205 live. Mhm. Live. Yeah. WWE presents Rage of Bulletarians. Basically. But here, here's the thing. I don't... I, I, I love the show. Uh, but are, the, are they in the wrong venue? I think so. It, I, like, I, like, I like the big atmosphere in it. I like that they're they're doing this in sold out shows and making it, make, they're making it huge like on SmackDown. Smackdown taping. I love the commentary team it's, of uh, of of Graves, Morrow, and Aries. But yeah, uh, sorry, I'm not mean to interrupt you there. No, you're fine. Uh, I was just gonna say it should probably be taped before Smackdown. Yeah, because I think I think the crowd seemed dead. Like like they, it maybe just me, but other than like. Big moves, though. Other than you know, the crowds haven't been great for like a lot of the cruiserweight matches since they've come up to the main roster. I think it's a case of that it needs to be in front of that full sale crowd. You know, as much as much as people knock it, like it needs to be in front of that smaller that kind hurts, of crowd. That hurts. That hurts. So I know. Bad. I know. But hey, um, not... yeah. But no, I, 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 I like the concept of it. I, I like and dislike mm-hmm. the concept of it because I feel like they've really kind of separated the cruiserweights in a way that I don't really enjoy. I don't like that they feel so separate. Yeah, I I I get what you're saying and I, I but I I I get what you're saying, Eamon, and I'm just thinking about it a little like bit. Like the more. like the closest thing and, the closest thing the cruiserweight division has to blending with anything else on Raw is like that Alicia Fox wants to bang Cedric Alexander. That's it. Like that's all that's all blending that they've done on on Raw when it comes to the cruiserweights. Wait, what? Have you not been you watch Raw, right? I watch Raw. They've been I teasing miss the whole this? Alicia. Yeah, for a couple of weeks they've been teasing the whole like, oh, Alicia Fox likes Cedric Alexander thing. She was one in the back watching that, his match. That... Oh, hey. Uh, but yeah, uh, I, I wish, like, uh, like you said, Eamon, I, I do wish like the the crowd was more into some of the matches. Uh, but to start off with something that was kind of pointless of. Uh, a ta- a, an established tag team is mm-hmm. going up against uh, Gulak and and uh, Nice, two great competitors. But unless they're going to do a tag title for 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 the two hundred five live thing, point in that match. Well, then you it was just also- to promote the Bollywood Boys. But then you can also argue why would you have the Bollywood Boys in the Cruiserweight division in general? And the answer would be 
No. Exactly. Yeah. The, okay. The I didn't know if you wanted to. The quota <laughs> of tag teams in the cruiserweight division. It's just weird to me. Like, I, I, I think, like, it's, I know, to me, the moment I realized it was during Jack Gallagher's match where he does the whole roll you up into a ball thing and put your own self in the submission and how the crowd like kind of didn't know how to t- like, didn't like go like, Oh my God, but like didn't react. Cause I don't um, think they knew how to react. And it's yeah, like, and that's the thing the full cell crowd knows how to do that because they've been there for months and that's the f- fan base that likes that shit. Yeah. People that, that dig, NXT that dig uh, the Indies. Like Jack Gallagher, that are, Jack Gallagher shouldn't get like mild applause. Yeah. Jack Gallagher should be on Raw right now getting standing ovations. Like that shouldn't be. He's adorable and a great wrestler. Yeah, that shouldn't be happening. I don't know if it was a case of them taping it after or, or doing it live and doing it after SmackDown that may have heard it or if it's just that big crowd. I think the big crowd has a lot to do with it though. But during that match, I, I did notice that they did have some, like, the, the crowds started to get into it a little bit late. Yeah. Like, uh, they, they, they started getting into it. As I said during the main event of, uh, of uh, by the way, of Very Rich good. Swan and, and uh, the Brian Kendrick. Uh, by the way, I hate, I hate that nickname that they gave Rich Swan. Oh, I missed that. Like, what was it? F- uh, it was. Uh, I'm blanking on the name. Was it something racist? I, I wrote it down. It was the. <laughs> it was not something racist, Damon. You never I, know. That, uh, did, actually, I'm, did Mar- I might, I did might, Ma- s- fairness. Did Morrow say it? No, it was like a. It was. It was from. Uh, sure. Not creepy, rich. Uh, Creepy Greg, the guy, the ring announcer. Oh, the ring announcer. The ring announcer now. Uh, let's see. Here, I'm just gonna. Well, Rich looks Keep talking. Keep talking. I, Rich Juan. Yeah. Keep talking. No. Um. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what to say. But yeah, whatever. Um. I don't. Know. I really don't. Know. I got no. something. Rich Juan is amazing. I yeah, did a with that man once. He 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 is a very cool person. There you <laughs> go. And honestly, the people there should have taken notice more notice of Rich Swan because he is Rich freaking Swan. I mean, if it, like he does in that ring, and so does so does Brian Kendrick. Brian Kendrick, for the for the life of me, I don't know how or why he he's like. Spanky, did, well, Spanky didn't work out because it was Spanky, but, but the Brian Kendrick, that that gimmick, that everything was amazing, and and both on Raw and on on Two Hundred Five Live, you saw how the microphone as well, like or in the backstage area, like the the the, the, the commentary between him and Byron, perfect, perfecto. Because I thought Byron was about to like seriously leave and cry, uh, and he made uh, T.J. Perkins somewhat bearable, <laughs> destroying him. Oh, I like on the it. microphone. Well, you know, that's you shut your mouth. Nobody likes T.J. Perkins. I think I like. He seems like a nice person. I don't know. It's, don't ga- it's, over it's game over. over. It, you don't just run over an NC for him. <laughs> Can we move on? You cannot break. Oh, oh, it's the outlandish Rich Swan. Yeah, that's not a nickname. No, that's what they call him. The outlandish Rich Swan. That, that's like what the ring announcer called him. Yeah, that's his official nickname. Uh, like, yeah, no, that, that's the official nickname I'm, of Rich I'm Swan. I'm going to default and say that's kind of racist. You, you you default you it's you like, default like, say, hey, that's some kind of racist name. It's like slightly racist, but no, um, it's it's slightly slightly. But yeah, I there's stuff I like. In his it. gimmick is his gimmick is he's dancing, so it's kind of racist. Yeah, but he seems like he's enjoying it, so whatever. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> that's not a good response, but whatever. Um, yeah, I 
I like and I I have my issues with with the cruiserweights right now, but overall, I I it's it's some it's something we can say this probably wouldn't have happened five years ago, like so it wouldn't have. Them. But it feels like we're also saying yeah. that a lot, to where it's kind of like I've come, I've gotten numb to it. Al- Alex, you've been silent over there, buddy. Come join us. <laughs> uh, yes. uh, I think I think the idea of having the show separately for cruiserweights is, you know, pretty good idea. Plus, the one guy in our group is probably loving it right now because he's finally getting to see. Uh, quote unquote, his idea of put into fruition, but I mean, I I still feel weird about the fact that a show featuring guys that are sometimes on Raw is on after SmackDown, and I feel like they were kind of teasing us to saying, "Hey, we're moving the cruiserweights to SmackDown now," and then they didn't, and now it's just now it's just all over the place. And I can't tell if the cruiserweights are supposed to be a separate division from like all the storylines or not. Especially since you mentioned the thing with Alicia Fox. So now I'm like, uh, what's going on here? This is starting to seem more and more like a bit of a mess. And like, just put in, if you want to just have more cruiserweight matches, put them on main event of superstars. Those are still shows. Like, well, well superstars may not be, but um, or forty out for the superstars. As of now, there's still rips. Rip superstars. Yeah, but as of now, they still are, and and they're still doing, you know, something with them. Uh, yeah, I, it's. I don't know. I I want I want them to be integrated more. I really think they should be integrated more. I just don't like the idea that we won't, we won't ever see Cedric or Rich Swan or uh, Akira Tozawa or Gallagher or any of those guys wrestle any of the other guys on the show. And, and uh, it's kind of a, a a yin and yang of revolutions type of thing because now we're seeing the women's division flourish on both shows, yeah, Raw and SmackDown because because of that interaction between uh, the ladies of the past and the present and the future, you have you have people from. NXT mixing in with the current generation of superstars and some of them even uh, in, in fairness though, in fairness though, are they mixing? Yeah. I don't, uh, Mickey James. Well, yeah, in that sense, but I mean like on the main rosters, do you, are they really mixing? Cause I feel, I mean, you have other than like Natalia and Naomi, I really feel like everyone is more of a new blood kind of person. Uh, Alicia Fox. Yeah, but she's, you know, Alicia Fox is. She's a former women's champion. She is. Don't count that out. She won it that one time. I mean, she's <laughs> she's been in the business that long. I, I'm, I'm not saying and, I don't like her, but I, we have even been on the show, uh, not liking the way the direction that the, the that the women's division went. With you know, with the and all that stuff. So, do you see? Do you? Do both of you see any? Like, do you think they'll use for the cruiserweight division, like they did with the the women's division? Like, maybe they'll see that. Hey, maybe if we do this, maybe if we bring, if we push them all onto the actual rosters, that maybe it would work out better than just having them on one show stagnant for the rest of their lives. I think there's a, I think there's a difference though between the women and the cruiserweights in the sense that the women don't also, or women also, you can argue don't interact (laughs) with the main roster. Like for the most part, now they've done it more with like, they have that mixed tag ones with Roman and Rusev, but like Mm -hmm. that was, but for rightfully so, because they don't really want a lot of men on women stuff in WWE. The issue to me with the cruiserweights is that you have the cruiserweight division, and then you also have all these people on NXT, like your Austin Aries, like um, you know, name anyone, Daniel Tommy, whoever, who are smaller guys who could be in that cruiserweight division, and then you also have Raw, where you have a lot of guys who aren't like the big heavyweights, 
like Neville. Wrestling has Sinkara. changed. Yeah, or not even that. Like even the Seth Rollins. I know he's not two hundred five, but like, like wrestling has changed in such a way to where not everyone's so like cruiserweights aren't so starkly different than everyone else on the show when it comes to size. And I think that's the bigger issue when it comes to integrating. And mm-hmm. you know what I mean? <clears throat> oh yeah. I, I know exactly what you mean. Uh, Alex, you have a thought about that one, about the uh, comparison there to the diva, or the women's division. Um, I think as far as like, keep, whether they need to be a completely separate division, or not, I mean, I just kind of think about like, from the time, like, so I'm, I'm thinking back to like 2001, like during the year, like the invasion angle, and the fact that that was basically how the cruiserweight title was brought into WWE in the first place. Right. Uh, this, you know, it was kind of a reminder that WCW was the one that actually did like a fairly solid job, at least to a certain extent, of highlighting what the cruiserweights were capable of. And they actually kind of kept them separate for the most part. So, kind of looking at it now, like once they brought them in, they still had the separate division, but then you saw all the different things happening with, you know, the different storylines. They got to a point where Hornswoggle was the last cruiserweight champion. Yes, he was. Put it away. Yes, he was. In a shelf somewhere, never to be seen again. Um, so, I don't know, like, Kind of looking you think at it. Hornswoggle has that? You think Hornswoggle has that on his shelf somewhere? He has at least a replica of it, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> you can now ask. You can now ask him. Uh, is it your local independent show? Um, but yeah, I think <laughs> he is the big deal. I, I, he is the big deal. Um, I think that it's hard. It's it's really hard because really. What that's the, that's maybe the biggest issue of me bringing the cruiserweights back. It's a it was a good idea. Like it, it was an idea that that the internet fans or whatever quote I'm doing air quotes uh, would say all the time is like we want the cruiserweight division back. Like like it, it was the equivalent of we want the attitude era back. Like it was the equivalent of you know bring back the women's title. Like it was that talking point for the longest time. But when you look at it, does it really need to be ha- happening? Like I want. Don't get me wrong, I love the people in that division, and I think they deserve jobs in WWE, but... Jack out her. Jack out, or even like a Drew Gulak or a Akira Tozawa or Cedric Alexander or Rich Swan. Like, they they all deserve to be in WWE. Uh-huh. But I don't know if there's a necessity for a cruiserweight division. Okay, that sounds good. That sounds like a good... Uh, so I think this might be a good time for a, a little, a commercial break for what you're going to find out on John media. I'm not sure what's going to be put here, uh, but hang tight. We'll be right back with some more mayhem with. Welcome back to the Wrestling Mayhem Show. I am still not Sorg, and these guys are also not Sorg. I'm joined by Eamon and Alex, and it is now time for the big question. You're on the not, you're on the not Sorg cast. <laughs> on the not Sorg cast of the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Cast. So we actually went to our our good friends mad mike for this next one uh for the big question and he brought up a good point we've had how many pay-per-views in the last few months our series uh we are having tlc this week we're having uh which no, we have no mercy really. which you should be at you son of a bitch uh we have no mercy uh, so what was what was the other? What were the other ones we, had? we had class of champions. Class of champions. Backlash. We had a whole bunch. Uh, we we had birth. we had so many things. We had and, capital and punishment. One of the big things. No, we didn't bring that up ever again. We had fully loaded. Do not bring that up. We had bad blood. Fully loaded. Okay. 
we had over the edge. We have we had the in your house that Owen Hart didn't die in. Uh, we had the one we had where breakdown. we had we had we had a uh, fetal we position had, and cry. Day of reckoning. Uh, oh, we had we had, uh, we had crush hour, of course. Uh, we had greed. We, we had. <laughs> Uh, yeah. We had November, November to remember. We had a whole bunch. So, anyways, any, anyways, uh, we had the rumble at the junction. We need to stop. This Tuesday in Texas. Oh. Riz, what was the question? Sorry, but yeah, and now I'm sorry if I ever made you mad or any angry. Then now you're probably just looking at me like I'm crazy. Uh, hey, anyways, hey, the big hey, question hey. is. What's the yes. question? The question is, do you guys handle pay-per-view fatigue? What What is your escape from so much wrestling in so many, min- of so many days? Do you want me to answer in a really stupid, obvious way? Yes. Uh, the, because the advice... I, yes, Amen. Yes. The advice I immediately thought of was um, watch what you like. Like, like, okay. if, honestly, I think people, especially WWE fans, but maybe not just WWE fans, but feel the obligation to watch everything. And 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 if there's a pay per view, they have to watch it because it's a pay per view coming up. If if Raw is on, you have to watch Raw because Raw is on, and, and it's on Mondays. It's always on Mondays, like. <laughs> never Sorry. changing. It's Actually, never no, that's, changing not that's, not, that's not true. They've had some Tuesday rounds before. But, um, have some Wednesdays, ma'am. Hey. Yeah, there you go. But no, my point is, you don't have to watch it if you're not up to it. Like, you, you shouldn't feel obligated to have to watch it. If, you, if you're not liking what's going to happen at a pay per view and if you're not excited for any of the matches or most of the matches, watch the one you're excited about and watch something else. No, you know. You could be wrestling related as well. Watch yeah. watch another wrestling show that, you know, go, there's tons of back catalog of stuff now. Like, you don't, mm-hmm. it's, the, the reason I think it's weird to say, like, pay-per-view fatigue it, is because that implies that you're in this place where you have to always watch the pay-per-view. You know what I mean? Yeah, oh, yeah. I know exactly what you mean, and I'm going to get mine a little bit, but Alex, what is your... Uh, remedy for um, pay-per-view fatigue. Funny enough, I think of the scene from that episode of The Simpsons where all the kids were watching the cartoon and they finally gave up on it. And they all went outside and they saw the hundreds of what outside looked like. Yeah. So if you have pay-per-view fatigue, go outside. <laughs> go take a walk. Read or a book. <laughs> Alex, you have you have that privilege to do that. Your pay per views come on at like three o'clock in the morning over there, so you're fine. You can just yeah. go out in the daytime, yeah, have, have your breakfast, have, come back, have, and watch wrestling. And not to brag, but I have more nature to go outside and walk around in. But <sighs> you suck. I mean, the truth of the matter is, I hardly ever get to watch the pay per views when they come on. <laughs> but. <laughs> Maybe that's the other way is know know your schedule. Be like, Oh, I can't make it to that pay per view for this reason. Oh well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and and that's what we live in now. And my my answer is simple. You have I totally forgot that there is I don't pay per view is kind of a moot point because I pay nine ninety nine a month. I pay for the main. Uh, I already pay for the uh, WWE network. They already have my money. I already see uh, truth dancing in the way. So I already have. They already have my money, so I can watch it whenever I want. I'll watch The Walking Dead live, and then after the show, after the after that show is done, and, uh pop on the network and watch it then. Mm-hmm. Or I can just go wait a day or two, 
know I'm going to come on the Mayhem show and binge watch the hell out of it and, and watch the parts that I want to watch. And that's the fun part about having the network and being in the now where we have so many other options to choose from. We well, have we have Sunday Night Football. We have... Uh, we have The Walking Dead. We even though if you don't like the show anymore for some reason, uh, you can you can watch whatever the hell you want to watch. If you don't want to watch wrestling today, you don't have to watch wrestling today. I have not watched a single episode of Lucha Underground this year. Not because you don't like it, but because I like it because I don't have time. And and I'll, I'll attest to that point. Here's a here's a dark little secret I haven't told anybody. I've only watched. Actually, no. I've I've watched one match of of the, off of the last uh, NXT Takeover. I've watched one match uh-huh. off of it, and it's been like a month, maybe. No, and no, not a month. Like maybe like a couple weeks or something. No, yeah, but it's been like two weeks. But and and I really want to. And I hear great things about that DIY revival match, and I really do want to watch it. But I also know I can watch it literally anytime I want. You can watch it. You can watch it now. Like after the I show, could. you can pop it on now, and but you won't because you'll be all mayhemed out. Yeah, I will be. Um, um, yeah, the so yeah, the, I, I I like this question by the way. Like it's not it's not me knocking the question. It, it, it's a great question because it's actually one of the things that I thought about before when I was when I honestly I was debating on whether to watch The Walking Dead or Survivor Series. And then the Goldberg match happened, and I'm like, I'm going to watch both because that's mm-hmm. what happened. It's it's fine now. It, I, it, it, we live in the age where we watch whatever we want on whatever console we want in whatever time we want. So it's fine. Everything's fine. Every it, I it, my fatigue level is is much lower than it has been before because I don't have to you know have to go on the like when i first started i don't have to have to go on aim uh aim chat rooms and watch that down to when the results are i don't have to do that i can just pop on the network or you can get i I, I have mouth nobody does that anymore uh even though you know glenn dies anyways uh so go on Facebook. Tell us what your remedy is for the uh, pay-per-view fatigue. And we will, you know, comment it like it on Facebook and Twitter and, and write it down in the YouTubes below or, or send us an email at that email address at, yeah. at wrestlingmahemshow.com. What the hell is that voice? Was that you, Alex? Yes, it was Alex. Okay, that was that was that was the scariest voice I've ever heard doing that. Good times, uh, and we had DJ Lunchbox here. Um, so, so now we we'll talk about the past. Let's, let's talk about a pay per view that's coming up this week. We, uh, uh, I'm really excited about it, and I'm not just saying that because I'll be there. TLC tables, ladders, and chairs. Can I just can I just talk uh, about how much and, and God, cause I guess it does it, it's towards that conversation. How much I really like SmackDown. Yeah, SmackDown is really good. I really like SmackDown. I binge watched a bunch of episodes with a significant other of mine. Uh, and to get ready for for Sunday. And I really like SmackDown. They're I, doing something different. I, Across the board, they're doing something different. Like Raw Raw, I don't mind. Like I think Raw's doing great stuff with Sar- Charlotte and Sasha, um, you know, and and some other like side stuff. But overall, it's kind of business as usual for the most part. I'm not saying it's bad, but it's business as usual. Mm-hmm. Um, SmackDown, I think, is really taking chances and is really doing something different. I this paper to give you an example. One of the matches is Randy Orton teaming with Bray Wyatt to take on Rhino and Heath Slater. Yeah. Tell before the draft happened. Put that before put that in your mind, everybody. Before the draft happened, would you have ever predicted that would have been a pay per view match? <laughs> no, 
No. Like that, I think maybe one week we had that. We had Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton as a tag team for some, but that was just the throwaway because but against we know Heath Slater we figured out. Yeah, against Heath Slater, Ed Rhino. Ed Rhino. Like that's a, I, and I'm excited for that match. Like it's not like a what the fuck are they doing? I'm like okay, this will be really now, good. Now, now have they? They didn't have an, a stipulation for that match, huh? I don't believe Tag so. Team that's, titles. I think that's, that's the only match possible. That should be the tables match. Yeah. Well, we'll get to it. But no, the other matches are. Yeah, we'll get to the table. Just as good. We got. I mean, I'm excited for the chairs match. Weirdly. Wow. Wait, 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 wait. You're excited for the chairs match? I know. It's Eric Rowan's specialty. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, it, no, it's uh, Baron Corbin and Kalisto, and, and that should be really fun. Like, I feel like they, they're the ones that could do a chairs match. You know, and make it interesting. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, Nikki Bella and Carmella with the no disqualification match. I, I've been enjoying that feud. Uh, that, that feud actually has a storyline. Yeah. Most of these most of these matches have a legit storyline or two. Like Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton have and and Heath Slater and Rhino have multiple storylines going through the same thing. Yeah. Um, Baron Corbin has have a storyline that tells a story through and through. Mm-hmm. And Carmella have a storyline. Miz and Dolph Ziggler storyline. Right, Becky story Lynch line. and Alexa Bliss. Uh, Becky and Alexa are probably the least built story in this one, but it oh, still has a story. I, I, I wouldn't even say least built. I would say it's it's probably one of the simpler stories, but it's yeah, it's still really interesting. And last night's contract signing was awesome. Like you know, putting Becky through that table, like. I don't know if you. Everyone was talking. Becky called Alexa a bitch, like, bitch, yeah, like, like no hyperbole. Like she's, yeah. Um, it, it was. It's yeah. great. I, I really do enjoy it. Like, I, I think they, they honestly elevating stars. They're on. They're, they're making me care about guys like Miz and Ziggler and you know Baron Corbin and 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 and, and Heath Slater and and this Randy pains you. This and pains Randy Orton say- even. Every bit of this, I know. I know you, Eamon, and you saying that you love Randy Orton now. I've, I've, I don't. I've never hate. I've never been. There's some people who on the show who hated Randy Orton, but I've, oh. I've, I've not, never cared about Randy Orton, and I really enjoy Randy Orton right now. Yeah, like I, I, Alex. I want to get Alex in on this one. What are your thoughts about TLC, sir? Uh, I am excited for it. Uh, TLC is always fun. Uh, like I don't. Sometimes I feel like we talk about how silly it is that they gimmick the pay per views, but I do like what they do when it comes time for TLC. Uh, obviously, like the split between like a TLC match and like their other uh, kind of gimmick matches through mm-hmm. that. Uh, have they officially announced uh, the women's title match as tables match? Yeah, they announced it on Smackdown. Yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. Because, like, I just like that little bit where, like, you know, the contract end, signing ends on someone getting put through a table, then that helps actually kind of drive the point of, like, what they're actually trying to do with it. Stuff like that, you know. And besides, it couldn't be any worse than the year that they introduced the stairs match into the array. So Shut your mouth. That was a classic. <laughs> In versus Big Show? That was... No, that was Big Show. Actually, I think that was Big Show and Eric Rowan. That was Eric Rowan's specialty was the stairs. <laughs> specialty. That's right. Uh, that was correct. Uh, but, but uh, yeah, no, I'm I'm, I'm pretty perturbed. For it. Yeah, I'm still kind of perturbed that he's that the tag title match is just a one a a, a falls a match. Nothing goes. Regular ass match, have Absolutely. chairs match, no disqualification, ladder match, t- tables match, TLC match. I'm fine with that. I honestly, I'm fine with it. 
I, I don't think it, it's not a match that it's not a match that needs a stipulation because it's, it, they're only facing because Orton and Bray won the number one contendership la- mm-hmm. yesterday. You know what I mean? So I, I understand they're not having a stipulation, but like because Nikki and Carmella, I get they've been feuding for months. Becky and Alexa, they've been feuding for months. Like Miz and Ziggler, like, yeah, makes sense. But like, and I and I think about it like. Also, look at all the people on SmackDown who aren't on this pay per view. Even American Elf is not on it. Like John Cena's not on it. Us. The Usos aren't on it. The Usos aren't on it. And those are guys who have all also been doing amazing stuff on SmackDown. Like that's crazy. Like the heel turn of the Usos. Really great. Probably one of the best, greatest things that ever happened to the Usos. Like the 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 word ends, they got rid of their attitude, like the happy go lucky things, and they're just yeah. That's it. That's their gimmick. They're, I'm not sure. Some, there's some not... Bowen. Uh, was it the Samoan Twat Hit team? Squad or the, what was it called? Samoan Twat Team. But um, but I I and I don't know this for sure. I'd have to look it up. I'm, I have no clue. I, it honestly feels like someone different's writing SmackDown. Like someone clearly different is is in charge of SmackDown. And from a from a non kayfabe, from from a someone is actually making this show different because Raw feels like WWE has has been for the last you know year or so, which isn't bad, but it's it's how it's been for the last year. And SmackDown legitimately feels like a different product. Feels like Daniel Bryan is actually running it. Or Shane, like, like or Shane, like the, the, look, Shane's making Daniel Bryan probably run it. Daniel Bryan is probably the 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 head guy going into this, and Shane's just there to go, just there. Uh, but with with you know with Raw, you have that hierarchy of this is the number one show. Don't fuck this up. Yeah. Just do what we say. And everything's good. And SmackDown is the is the, the the league that's going. You know what? Just go out there and have fun. Do your thing. Do your stuff. Go on talking smack. Say some stuff about me. Go do this, and it, it's going to be all gravy. And watch everybody just melt in your hands. And it's simple. Like it's it's simple storytelling for the most part. You know what I mean? It's not anything too over the convolute. Like like the Usos, for example. Make sense, turn them into badasses, and, and just build them up. And, and, and they've done a really great job at that. Just, li- just little stuff they do with character words and, and stuff like that. Like, like this stuff, mm-hmm. giving Naomi that entrance, which is one of my favorite things on SmackDown. Like, now she, Naomi, Naomi has always been, so, always been someone I liked, but never got the crowd reaction. Like, never got the investment of the crowd, and now she has it. Like, like the women's division is great. The tag division is great. It's really stacked as well. Like, it, it's almost a shame that Heath Slater and Rhino had the belts. Not, I love them, but like, there's a lot of great tag teams right now on SmackDown too. I would argue the tag division on, is better on SmackDown than Raw. It is because you got the New Day. It really is. Who are you know either you like them or you're over them by now. Um, you got Gallows and Anderson who are, you know, whatever. They're there. Yeah, and, and like Enzo and Cass, and then like the Shining Stars and Golden Truth, like like SmackDown's where the tag no, division don't is. Do up again. I know. I, I will um, fire you. That's fair. But uh, no sm- Are you on the spot. SmackDown I have that power now. SmackDown's got like the you know that power. Okay, Riz, okay. <laughs> uh, but no, SmackDown has the tag division, they've got the women a great women's division. Um, they're doing. Is I, I teeter on whether I like it or not, but overall, from the creative standpoint, having James Ellsworth involved in the heavyweight title thing is is at least different. Like it's it's different. Like yeah. I, and I appreciate that. Um, and it's they really do feel like they're doing something for everyone, and they have one less hour than Raw does. They have a lot to fill, and they're filling it though. And then yeah. they have a lot of people, like, and they're filling it with people that people like. You don't see like they're sporadically. Mm-hmm. Uh, who are the other like the 
like the VOD villains, even though they lose a lot this past like the the past few weeks, they have been on their time I've turned on the television on SmackDown. Yeah. Because that's that's who people like. And I, and it feels like SmackDown is just making sure everybody gets what they want. You want to know what's what's a great testament of this? I'm excited this Sunday to see what the pre-show match is going to be. Oh, what is the pre-show match? They haven't announced it yet, but I'm excited about it. And I, cause I have no clue who it is, but um, <laughs> if it's American alpha and Usos, which would make sense, I would be excited. If it's another women's match thing, I'd be excited. If it's, you know, so many, like that, that's a test. Different. That's a testament to how good the show is right now. Ca- like, Alex, what? I'll give you the last. Oh, I'll let you finish the thing. I was, I was just gonna make fun. I was just gonna make fun of Golden Truth again, but no. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, I'm gonna give you the last word here. Uh, what are, are are you excited for this? Are you excited for Smack? Are you excited for SmackDown? <laughs> Can I just say that Riz sounds like a parent, like telling them, asking their child if they're excited that Santa's coming? <laughs> are you excited? I am, of course, are, are, excited for SmackDown Live. Because here's the thing. Um, I think you guys already kind of brought it up. And, like, it's kind of funny. Like, even, like, the involvement of the authority leaders on the two shows is, like, somewhat different. Uh, I was reading live tweets from a friend of mine who was, like, reading Raw on Monday and noted how many of the segments Mick Foley was involved in or Steph was involved in. And I feel like we don't see that quite as much with uh, Shane and Daniel. And every, every once in a while, but it's never over the yeah. No, exactly. So it's just like, so just little yeah. things like that. And I mean, Amy kind of broke it down already. Like the tag division in SmackDown is much more solid. Uh, frankly, I, I love the idea of having Slater and Rhino as a champions, but like, especially just because like, it was such a surprise, you know, like everyone was like basically expecting this to be America Alpha's time. And that didn't happen. And I think they told a really good story in having like the long shot of Pete Slater actually winning a tag team championship, actually winning a title for the first time in a while. And yeah, James Ellsworth. I mean, you know, any man with two uh, fists has a fighting chance, you know? Yeah. I, I, I think I've pinpointed down to what I like about it. It's what NXT used to be. SmackDown, feel, yeah, I can see Smackdown feels like what NXT used to be in like the era, like the first, the era where it was like the first couple takeovers. Like that era of NXT. Before it got to the point of like and it just being about signing the big names. And, and I got a question for both of you, uh, real quick. Do you think more people are going to want to go to SmackDown? More, more NXT wrestlers like a Ty Dillinger, or oh, yeah. Shinsuke, or Ty Dillinger would f- fucking kill. On, on SmackDown. And, and I, w- I would think that he there's a good chance he may fizzle out on Raw. Oh, there's a there's a huge chance that's going to happen. Like, I, I would, would I definitely would prefer to have some NXT guys. Like, a, specific, I think a Shinsuke can do well on Raw. Like, I think guys like Ty, mm-hmm. guys like, um, like a No Way Jose, maybe even, I feel would be much better on Joe, SmackDown. Joe would have... I think Joe would have been the same thing on Raw as well. Yeah, out well, fast. I, I he'd be he'd be a lot like a Rusev to me. Like he's there, he's there to be a force or whatever, but get beat up in the end. Like I feel if you yeah. put him on SmackDown, they would make him a monster. Yes, Alex, what do you think? Uh, I'm inclined to agree with Eamon. I think our uh, like. I think, honestly, I think all the NXT guys and, like, all the NXT women, like, they all have, like, different roles that they would fit on each of the different shows, but I think SmackDown just consistently has 
I think more of a platform for certain roles and uh, you guys have already kind of covered it. I think, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I think that I think it would be really good to see some guys move over from NXT to SmackDown. So. Okay. So guys, it's been fun. We've, we've had fun. Mm-hmm. I had fun. You guys want to do this again on Tuesday? Sure. When we actually have Sorg here. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. yeah, maybe 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 Sorg is actually the uh the cornerstone to this piece. But uh I do thank you guys for joining us, for joining me on uh Wednesday while you know out doing something. Uh thank you guys for joining us here on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh on Mayhem Show on the follow us on Mayhem Show Twitter. Oh oh, oh, we, uh, oh, oh, we forgot one thing. Eamon. Riz. Sir. <laughs> Sir, ma'am, ma'am. Uh, what did you learn from wrestling this week? I learned from wrestling this week that I officially hate internet fans. I'm with you guys. I, I, Explain. I'm doing the back. Uh, you, you remember... Explain. You remember... You remember Riz in uh, like 2000 uh, when when Jericho and Name Redacted Benoit um, had th- that great series of yeah. but it had that great series of matches throughout 2000 and, and and you you knew that you could always put them against each other and it would be really great or when you had say um, I don't know like um, Eddie Guerrero and and Kurt Angle or or you know uh, Kurt Angle and Brock Lesnar and, and they had all these amazing matches. Uh, th- th- that always delivered, and everyone was like, "You're doing this too much." I remember, remember that. Remember I, when I people rem- reacted I, like that? I remember. I remember. I remember so well. Pepper Farm remembers. I remember. uh, that that that's 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 Sasha mm. Charlotte. Apparently, because no, they it's wrestled. not. No, I, I, what I'm saying, what I'm I'm, I'm being contrarian, Riz, because I actually agree with you. You have to follow. You have to follow me here. Um, no, every time they wrestle, it's amazing. Every time they wrestle, it's really good, and they always deliver. And yeah, they make them wrestle a bunch because they always deliver. Yeah. So stop, like people and, who are like they're doing this too many times. I'm sick of this. What are you sick of? Great matches, <laughs> compelling yeah. characters, a great baby face, and a great heel. What are you sick of? What did you really want from women's wrestling? Fun. What did yeah. what did people what did people I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm, sorry, I'm going when no, people were okay. talking when we're, when people were talking about how they didn't like how the women's division was, the or the divas division, and they wanted change, what exactly did you want? What exactly did you want? Like this is everything that should be happening Alex? for women's wrestling. Sorry, I'm done. I'm done. Alex, oh, you're fine. What, I was, just gonna, I was, what was your what was your retort? My retort is the only thing I'm slightly sick of, and I brought it up in a couple of places after this past Monday, was, oh, hey, Sasha just won the title again on Raw. And I guess we'll see what happens at the pay-per-view. Um, see, I like that, I, personally. Because I think, I, I, I said it on Twitter, I think it makes them like feel like equals. I think it... I think it makes it feel like neither of them's better than the other. I I, so, I think you do that. I mean, that's the only you know. Like I I I like the matches they give too. That's not you know my complaint isn't about the matches. It's just I don't know. I would just like to see Sasha finally win one, and maybe that's the story WWE trying to do. Because remember when we had the whole thing with Daniel Bryan, uh, not quite making it to the top, and everyone rallied. They're behind also. Him. So I don't know if maybe that's what they're going they're, for. They're definitely going for that one. So they're definitely going for the uh, the 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 pay per view storyline because they have mentioned Charlotte hasn't lost on a pay per view yet. Yeah, or in, in in a singles match. In a singles match? Oh no, no, it was a because she lost lost a title match. Yeah, it was something strange. It was she has not lost a title match on a pay per view. 
or something weird like that. The only and time it's she's true. Lost pay- it- the only time she's lost on a pay-per-view was the tag match at Battleground. But other than that, she's yeah, won and- every time. And I think that's, uh, that's a mm-hmm. really cool story. Alexander. So, yeah. But- Cars the third. Third. Um, okay. Fourth. Uh, yeah. I learned two things this week from wrestling. I kind of covered the first one. Uh, I learned I think I know where the cycle's going, but hopefully hopefully the cycle will be broken. That would be nice to see that story come to its head. Um, the other thing I learned, I actually officially were learned literally a week ago, is that there is a local wrestling training facility near like the place where I live back home. Mm-hmm. That if I actually wanted to get into the business, I could learn the fundamentals. And that is kind of crazy because I've told myself before, uh, I don't think I could do it because because I don't have the money to do it and there's not a place close by. And turns out there is. There's one in the city of Stanton. Just not too far from my house, which is kind of nice. But uh, <laughs> like that was an interesting thing to learn. Alex, are you going to wrestle? Maybe. We'll see what 2017 holds. You're wrestle? <laughs> is is Al, is Al Gran Azul going to be in professional oh, wrestling? Oh, man, I hope so. That would be so good. At least get me on $5. That would be nice. The five, uh, that, that would be nice to see five dollar wrestling. Yeah, I don't think it's still a thing anymore. I don't think it is. We could make it a thing again. We could. Well, we have to have a lot of money and and freight train. At least five dollars freight train. It costs more than five dollars. Um, Riz, Riz, what did you learn in the wrestlings? In the wrestlings. I, I learned what the uh, the equivalent to a super number two is, and it was called the whole loaf of bread. The greatest man that ever lived, who put a dick in uh, Christy Hemi's face one time. Uh, but seriously, I learned that that Rich Swan is pretty amazing, is- and. He, and also, I mean, I, I should have learned that before, but his match with uh, an also equally amazing Brian, or I almost called him Brian Christopher, uh, Brian Kendrick, probably one of the best matches of the week so far. And there's a pay per view coming up. So I'm interested to see where this goes. And I hope you guys join us next week here on the Wrestling Ham Show. Where we'll be back live on live.sorgatronmedia.com. We'll be being on Facebook Live as well. And back uh, also go to the, the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook page. And also join us on Mayhem Show Twitters as we post. I think I just saw a post fr- from Sorg on his trip to uh, Thailand where he is wearing a Wrestling Mayhem Show shirt that I think this was before. Uh, Alex made our shirts, uh, but he is. Sorry, I forgive you. He is he is sporting the the OG original Mayhem Show shirt. It was Bond Island from the scene from the Man with the Golden Gun. <laughs> that is very specific, and I'm 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 very excited, very happy that he was is not in a bikini or what. Yeah. Uh, duck on his head like the original James Bond did in that movie. Eamon. Riz. Sir. You can find me on Twitter. I, I, I know I follow you on Twitter. No, Where can you can... Oh, you said you Go can ahead. follow me on Twitter. Yes, you can. If you want. Where can they find you on Twitter? Uh, it's a little account called uh, Amen Two Please. Uh, that's Amen the Number Two Please. Uh, you can also yeah. find uh, the wrestling company I work for, Inspire Pro Wrestling, over at InspireProWrestling.com and get tickets for our next event on December eighteenth in Austin, Texas. 
least. Mr. Alex Cars, a uh, Patreon supporter of the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Oh, where, yes. Where can they find you? You can find me on all the places. Um, that doesn't narrow it down at all. You're right. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, tw- tweeting wrestling things at Power to the Smarts. That's Power Number Two the Smarts. You can find the website PowerToTheSmarts.com where I will eventually have a new episode of the podcast recorded and posted. I'm currently working towards my year-end special. You can also find uh, the Chikara and 15 podcast over at Chikara15.com when I get the site back up and running. Uh, uh-huh. Literally just got a notification about that earlier today. Uh, but it will be back up and running. And Chikara's, Chikara's doubleheader season finale is this weekend. Uh, oh, that's Temple right. Doom. And Supremacy, live in Chicago. Oh. Chicago. And Did you spell after, that C H I K? Tempting. It is you tempting. spell it like Chicago. It's tempting. Uh, you can find uh, shortly after the season finales have come and gone, uh, I will start getting ready for the Chicago 15 year end shenanigansa, which will include the Chicago 101 awards, which you can. Find more info on that at the Chikara 101 forums. And as well as just a look back at season fifth, uh, season 16, excuse me. Uh, it's going to be, it's going to be fun. Nice. That's going to be where they can find me. So what's going Riz? on? You guys are not going to. Rizev. Rizev. Alex. Where Alex. Can find you? Thank can you. Find? You can find me at Riz Plays Games on YouTube's, on the Twitches, on the Facebooks, Twitters, on everything else. If you like video games, if you don't like video games, you can also follow me at the E Riz. Also, also, this past well, well hours ago, I posted on Indie Wrestling You can find. Every, like you can find at IWC, you can find our friends at RWA, and you can find Prime Cuts featuring uh, Finding Zach Gowan, the Traveling Table of Virgil. You can and stuff, and also a very special ease where I. Uh, talk about WrestleCade's last show. A whole bunch of other stuff. Especially ones that happen, one that happened in AIW uh, this past weekend. Easing, as I heard. Uh, but other than that, you can just find me everywhere you maybe. And with that, Thank you guys so much for joining us. I know it was a little rough show. You, I probably roboted Don't out apologize. many times. Don't apologize. No, no, I'm going to apologize as much as I want to, Eamon. So I'm sorry. You should be. Uh, but, but thank you guys so much for joining us here on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. I am the Rez for Eamon. Eamon, too, please. For, oh, 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 before we forget. Yeah. Thank you to our, uh, to our fine, fine... Uh, person doing the Twitters and doing the Facebooks, uh, Missy Storg. Thank you, thank you so much for doing this for us. Because you know I can't multitask at all. I can barely do this thing. Uh, and for that, for myself, for Eamon, for Alex, for Sorg, for uh, just to be here Tuesday for everybody except for Google. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining us here on uh, the Wrestling Mayhem Show. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.